All right, my math two people with your beautiful math minds, we've got lesson 3.1.4, unions, intersections, and complements. All right, so here's our first problem that we got today. Election day is a month away, and political analysts are watching two statewide campaigns. According to a recent poll in the race for governor, 40% of voters support the Republican candidate, while 53% support the Democratic candidate. All right, so for governor, we got 40% and 53%. There's a little bit of a problem with that because 40% and 53% adds up to 97 or 93%, which means there must be another candidate out there. Maybe it's like an independent or it's just other. So we've got 40% and we've got 53%, but our percentages for a event should always add up to 100%. So I'm just going to write here that we've got 7% other something out there. I don't know what it is, but there's something out there. All right, so that's for governor. And then we got a second race for attorney general, and 61% support the Republican, while 37% uh, are supporting the Democratic candidate. And those two are... Let's see, 61 and 37, that's making 98%. So it looks like 2% is something other than Democratic or Republican. So maybe it's independent, maybe it's like the Green Party, whatever. It's something else other than two major parties. All right, so we're supposed to create an area model and find the probability for electing the two Democrats. So we're going to assume that the voter preference is independent, and this is not very real worldish. Uh, normally, if you vote for a Republican governor, you're more likely to revolt, uh, vote for an attorney general Republican also. But we're going to pretend like people are just voting for the person and not for the party. So that means that one vote is not going to affect the other vote. All right, so we want to make a uh, area model for this one. So our area model should have our two elections going on here. And the two elections have three things that can happen. Republican, Democratic, or something else. All right, so... Let's start with governor over here. So this is voting for governor. We've got Republican. We've got Democrat or other. For attorney general, we got Republican, Democrat, or other. Okay, so for the governor, that one was the ones in red. 40% want the Republican candidate, so that's 0 0.4. We've got 53% oops, who want the Democrat, and then we said 7% want other, so that's 0 0.07. And then the Attorney General, that was in blue up here, 61% want the Republic, Republicans, so that's 0 0.61. Uh, Democrat was 37%, so 0 0.37. And then other was 0 0.02. So what we're going to do for these two situations is we want to find out what is the probability for electing two Democrats. So a Democrat for governor and Democrat for attorney general. So this is going to be our sample space for this situation. The first thing in our sample space is what if they vote for two Republicans? That's in here. I would just do 0.4 times 0.61, and that comes out to 0 0.244. What about a, a Democrat and a Republican? That'd be 0 0.53 times 0 0.61. That's 0 0.3233. Other, and then a Republican, so that's 7% times 61%. 
and I've already done all these calculations earlier, and 0 0.0427. All right, what about a Republican and a Democratic Attorney General? This would be 0 0.148, multiplying those two numbers. What about a Democrat and a Democrat? That'd be 0 0.1961. And then other and Democrat, that would be 0. Point, I think it's 259. 025. What? 0. 0.0259. Okay. Sorry, that was bad. Badly done. Badly done. Um, and then that's 0. 0.0259. And then filling in the rest of them, this is 0. 0.008. This is 0 0.0106, and this is 0 0.0014. Very not likely to happen. This is less than 1% right there. All right, so find the probability for electing two Democrats. It's right there. Democrat for governor and Democrat for uh, attorney general. So that would be... 0.1961, so that's 19.61%. That's the chance of voting Democratic for governor and attorney general. All right, next part. Which, which outcome, wait, which outcome fall under the event, that's badly typed, vote Democratic governor. All right, so which outcomes, that should be outcomes, fall under the event, vote Democratic governor. So we've got <coughs> two events there. One event is the vote for governor. The other event is the uh, vote for attorney general. So when we want two events to happen at the same time, this is what we're going to end up calling an intersection. So this was an intersection where we're doing Democrat and Democrat. Okay, so which outcomes will fall under the event vote Democratic governor? Well, all of these, let's do a pencil here. All of these, wait, vote Democratic governor. Governor, Democrat, all of these are Democratic governor. What about vote Democratic attorney general? All of these are voting for the Democratic attorney general. Okay, where they, uh, where they intersect is this section here. So we want Democrat and Democrat, they intersect at this point. Since, since we want an and where it happens for both, they're intersecting right there. Uh, we don't have to write down this section. All right, so what we have here is what's called an intersection, where the outcomes of the sample space are from two different events, and we want them both to happen. Okay, so we wanted this uh, event. We wanted the Democrat from this event. And from this event, we wanted the Democrat. We want it where it happens on both of them. This is called an intersection. And you can see here, you know, pretty easily that we are intersecting here. They're both happening at the same time. So when it's an intersection, you're going to multiply the two probabilities. So we're looking for the probability of a Democrat governor, and then we're multiplying it with the probability of a Democratic attorney general. So that's what it's gonna look like when we're doing an intersection. The way that we would write this, since we're looking for these two things to happen and we're multiplying, is this is the probability of Democrat governor and Democrat attorney general. So we would call this an and situation. It's an intersection. We want to know where those two things are happening at the same time. And we saw up here the way that this happens is that we multiply the two separate events together. So the event of governor Democrat gets multiplied with the event 
of Attorney General Democrat. So in an intersection, when they're independent events, you're going to multiply the probability of a Democrat times probability of the Democrat because it's an and situation, an intersection. All right, Darren hopes that a Democrat wins at least one of the offices. He tells his friend that 90% of voters support a Democratic candidate. Where is he getting the 90% from? Well, he's looking at this up here. He's saying, <coughs> oh gosh, <coughs> sorry. He's saying over here for governor, 53% want Democrat. And over here for attorney general, 37 want Democrat. So he just adds those two up and he says, look, 90% of the people want a Democrat. Is he right? No, he's not right. Because this is what we call an or situation. He wants the probability of a Democratic governor or a Democratic attorney general. And in this situation, you can't just add up 37 and 53 to find out that probability. The reason is that these two intersect. So these three numbers here add up to 53%. These three numbers here add up to 37%. But this intersection right here is used in both of those numbers. So this number is these three added together. This number is these three added together. And this number is used in both of those situations. So he's not correct because if I just added these individually, that doesn't work. So in an or situation, we would do the probability of the Democratic governor plus the probability of the Democratic AG, Attorney General. So that's what Darren's doing. But Darren is double counting this 19.61% in here because this one is in this total and it's also in this total. So what we have to do is subtract the probability of the intersection or the and. So the actual uh, probability for one or the other to happen, because he wants at least one of the offices to be that, the actual probability would be the probability of Democratic governor. I don't know why I was doing that on pencil. Democratic governor is 0 0.53. Then we would add the probability. Oops. Why am I doing this today? I don't know. 0 0.37, gosh. So Democratic AG, and then I have to subtract the and because the and is double counted. It's in this column's total and it's in this column's total. So if I just add 37 and 53, I am double counting this amount right here. So I got to subtract out the double count. So we would actually have uh, 0 0.1961. The actual probability that a Democrat wins a seat is 90% minus 19.61%. All right. So his friend points out that that's true. Then 101% of the voters supports the Republican candidate. Yeah. So his friend goes, yeah, but if that's true, then I could just add up these two numbers and get for Republican and get 40% plus 61% and say, hey, there's a 101% chance that a Republican is going to be uh, elected. And that's obviously not true. You can't get a 101% chance of somebody being elected. So his friend is correct. So Darren is wrong because of what we were saying here, that he is double counting the 
the voters who vote for both the Democrats. He's double counting the voters who vote Democrat governor and Democrat attorney general. So when we're doing an or situation, this is called a union. So when we have a union, we're happy with one thing happening or the other thing happening. So one way you can do a union is if you have this table, just add up all of these that we've shaded in here. These are all the probabilities of um, the Democrats. Now, you'll, you'll never go wrong with doing it like this because you won't double count this in there. But this can kind of be a long way of doing it. So instead, when we do the union, what we're supposed to do for an or, so the probability event of event A or event B, we're going to find out in an independent situation that what we can do as a shortcut is to do the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then we have to subtract where they overlap, the probability of A and B. All right, so a union is an or, where we're happy with one or the other. So what are the outcomes for the Democratic governor or the Democratic attorney general? Again, we could add up these five. That's one way to do it. So we could do 0 0.323, uh, 3233 plus 0 0.1961 plus 0 0.0196 plus 0 0.0259. So that's the long way of doing it just finding all the different outcomes where you have a Democrat because you're happy with one or the other, or you can do the shortcut in this section. So this total comes out to a total of 70.39. So that comes out to 0 0.7039 or 70.39%. All right, what is the probability of a Republican governor and a Democratic attorney general? So that's an intersection, it's an and. So when we do that, we multiply. So the probability of Republican governor and Democrat attorney general this is where we would just multiply the two probabilities together. So this would be the probability of the Republican governor times the probability of the Democratic AG. And we've already got that. The and is an intersection. Here's Republican governor. Here's the Democrat AG. Since we want them both to happen, this is the probability of them both happening. That's 14.8%. So we end up with 14.8%. What is the probability of a voter supporting the Republican governor or the Democratic attorney general? All right, so two ways to do it. The long way, if we want Republican governor, that would be all of these. And a Democratic attorney general, that would be all of these. So I could take these five and this T right here. I could take these five and add them all together. That's the long way of doing it. So taking all five of these and adding it is the long way. 
But remember, when we're doing an or, we can take the probability of A plus the probability of B and subtract out the probability of A and B. So let's do that. The probability of the Republican governor plus the probability of Democratic AG. And then we're going to subtract out the probability of them both happening, the and. So we don't double count it. Because up here, Republican governor, Democrat AG, if I just add up 0.37 and 0.4, I am double counting this 0 0.148. So I want to subtract out the double count. So the probability of a Republican governor, that was 40%, 0 0.4. The probability of a Democratic attorney general, that was 37%, 0 0.37. But we're double counting this 0 0.148. So we subtract that out in an or situation, 0 0.148. So the probability of one or the other happening ends up being, what is this when I add these all together? 62.2%. Uh, so 0 0.622 or 62.2%. And that's what this is. This is the addition rule of probabilities. If you've got an or, which is a union, then you can take the probability of those two together and subtract out the probability of the intersection. So this can also be written as probability of the union of A and B, because or is a union, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then subtract out the intersection. Now this only works in independent events. It doesn't work in dependent events. Uh, so we have to make sure that it is an independent event. Use the addition rule to find out the probability of a third party candidate being elected for governor or an attorney general. Uh, oh, so for one or the other. So we're going to do the probability of A, which is the probability of the third party. So that's the other for governor. So other for governor was 7%. So we're going to say the probability of a governor third party is 7% plus the probability of a third party attorney general. Third party attorney general was 2%. And then since we're doing a union here, we have to subtract out the intersection because this number right here is being double counted on this one. So if I just add up these three numbers and these three numbers, I have double counted this one right there. So I'm going to subtract out the and, which is 0 0.0014. And then we find out that our total probability comes out to 0 0.0886, which is 8.86%. All right, so that's a really important rule for the ORs. You can do it the long way by adding up each individual intersection up here, but the addition rule of probabilities is much easier for the ORs. Remember, when it's an intersection, you multiply the two probabilities, so that's an AND. When it's an OR, you add the two probabilities, but subtract out the intersection. All right, we're almost done. All right, a new restaurant is doing marketing research for four new salads. They ask various ages, various ages which salad they preserve, prefer, as shown on the area model. So here we got salad preferences. We got one, two, four different salads. One, two, yeah, four different. 10% wanted feta, barbecue 60%, Asian ginger 10%. That sounds good. Uh, chopped cob 20%. Then we got all these different age groups up here. All right, so... <clears throat> All of these boxes represent the intersections, so where both of them are happening. So our first event is salad preference. Our second event is age. 
we want to know where these events are intersecting. So for this first one, I would do 10%, uh, so 0 0.1 times 0.36. So 0 0.1 times 0.36 is 0 0.0. 036. Okay, I'm going to pause right here and just fill this out so you don't have to watch me doing it. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be multiplying all these together. All right, just a second. All right, I've done all the work there. <clears throat> I've multiplied all the probabilities. So these are all the intersections. These are all the ands where they're both happening. Now we're going to fill out these parts. What is the probability that the person surveyed is 55 years or older? So there's the first event. They are 55 years or older. Or Oh, sorry, or older, and chooses barbecue chicken salad. So we want an and situation here. But we're looking at 55 years or older. That would be these three together. I'm looking at these three columns and barbecue chicken salad. So these three plus these. So we're only looking at these boxes. This is where you're 55 or older and choosing barbecue chicken salad. So what you could do for this one is just add three, these three together. Or you could use the probability where we're doing the probability of A times the probability of B. So the probability of A, that's that they're 55 years or older. So if I add up these three, that's where they're 55 years or older, and 8 plus 6 plus 5, that's 19%. So the probability of them being 55 years or older is 0 0.19. And then I would multiply that probability by the ones wanting chicken salad, which is 60%, 60 0 0.6. So multiplying those together, I end up with 0.114 or 11.4 percent. So this is an and situation. In an and situation, we multiply the two probabilities together. Now, if I would add up these three probabilities, I should still get 11.4 percent. Is this part a characterized as a union or is it an intersection? That's a union. Union. Because we want and. We want them both to happen. Okay, they both have to happen, so that is a union situation. Calculate 55 years or older or barbecue chicken salad. So we're happy with all of these groups here, and we're happy with all of these groups here. But remember, if I add up all of these and I add up all of these, I end up double counting these three sections. So this is an or situation, an intersection. So we want the probability of A plus the probability of B. But then we have to subtract out the overlap, the intersection of them the probability of A and B. Well, the probability of A, we already said, was 19%. That's the probability that you're going to be uh, 55 or older. The probability of B, chicken salad, was 60%. And then we found out that the probability of them both happening at the same time, remember this is where they're being double counted, so if I add up all of these three columns and this row, we double count these three numbers. We have to subtract where we're double counting. So we're going to subtract out the probability of A and B, which we already solved up there, which is 0 0.114. And if we look at that, that ends up being uh, 0 0.676 or 67.6%. Find the probability of under 75. All right, so this is where we have something that's uh, called a complement. Because under 75 is everything except for 5%. So we're not even looking at salad preference here. We're just looking at this event of age. And we want under 75. 
Well, that would be all of these people. So one thing we could do is add up all of these numbers here and then get our answer. But a faster way to do it is what would be a called a complement. So what I could do is I could do the opposite. Since all of these add up to 100%, what I could do is take the opposite of what's happening. So the opposite is they're 75 uh, or over because we're looking for under 75. The opposite of that is over 75. That's 5%. What we can do is we know the total probability is 100% or 1. And then we can subtract out the people that are over 75 or over. So the opposite of this is this happening. So we could do the probability of it not happening. One minus the probability of not being under 75. Because our probabilities always have to add up to 100%, so it's faster in this case to just go, okay, the people I'm not looking for are 5%. So the rest of those people would be 100% minus 5%. And we'd find out really quickly that there are 95% that are under 75. And that's what's called a complement. The A complement is when you have the probability of something happening is always one minus the probability of it not happening. Because if you add up the probability of something happening plus it not happening, that's always going to be 100%. So the probability of something happening plus the probability of it not happening, it's always going to be 100%. So it looks like here we just subtract out the probability of it not happening, and that's how we got 1 minus the probability of it not happening. All right, that's all I got for you. Math hard. See you guys later. Bye-bye.